Hello Founder fans, Jason here. Today we talk about the devil. And Jonathan Moulton. Today's founder is Jonathan Moulton and the deal he allegedly made with the devil. Before we get into that, let's just discuss Moulton's life. Jonathan Moulton was a New Hampshire resident who had moved to the frontier and made a good amount of money uh, as a merchant, trading with furs and selling to the frontier's people their wares and goods as they needed. He also had served in King George's War and in the Seven Years War. So he had experience as a soldier leading other men, an officer, in fact. So when the American Revolution rolls around, Moulton had already been elected to the Colonial Assembly. He was already on the Committee of Safety, and he was given the title of Brigadier General in the New Hampshire Militia. As a Brigadier General in the Militia, he was responsible for defending New Hampshire, specifically its 15 miles or so of oceanfront coastline. Well, that might not seem like a lot. It is the coast of New Hampshire, and it was important. The British could land a ship anywhere at any time, or several ships even, uh, and that could be very bad if you were not prepared. They did burn a few cities and, well, I should say, towns up in Maine, and there was always the threat that they would do this. It's a little surprising they actually never, or very rarely did, but... The Impatriots were always ready for this, and Jonathan Moulton did this for all eight years of the war. He did leave and participate in the Saratoga campaign and help out with that, but primarily he was responsible for defending New Hampshire. Once the war ends, he goes back to private life, serves a little bit in the assembly, uh, doesn't do too much, but he is more famous now as a legend or a mythical creature than he is as an American founder. So let's go back, let's backtrack to before the revolution when he was just running his merchant shop out on the frontier and he made a lot of money. He made a lot of money. Somehow he was able to paint his house white. Ugh, imagine the waste of resources painting your house white. This made his neighbors very suspicious. Now, the, the story I'm about to tell you does not emerge for about 20 years after his life in a poem, but it was a local lore, so to speak. And the idea was, apparently, uh, well, Jonathan Moulton met the devil. And the devil said he would give Moulton as much money as Moulton could fit in a boot. So Moulton, being a thinking man, cut a hole in the bottom of his boots and a hole in the floor of his house. And the devil kept pouring in money. And the more money he poured in, the more the, the boot never filled up. It just wouldn't fill up. Until finally his entire basement was full of gold. And that, apparently, is how Jonathan Moulton made all this money. By deceiving the devil. Well, not long after this happened, his house burned down. Now, we're not really sure why his house burned down but there's a pretty good chance the other frontiersmen burned it down either because he was friends with the devil or more likely because he didn't have any problem flaunting his money in people's faces. And, you know, people don't take kindly to that, especially out on the frontier uh, where vigilante justice was most certainly a thing. Now, he does escape from this with his family, but sadly, uh, his first wife, Abigail, passes away of smallpox in 1775, just as the revolution is starting to get underway. Very shortly thereafter, within a year, he marries another woman named Sarah, who was younger and, by all accounts, prettier than Abigail was. He also seems to have been a little bit frugal, and he gave Sarah the same wedding ring that Abigail wore. Well, they get married, they go home, and they go to sleep. And all of a sudden, who shows up? Well, Abigail, the ghost of Abigail, shows up to haunt Sarah, apparently trying to get her ring back. This also was, uh, 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 again, a legend. Uh, obviously, it's a ghost story. Um, but it was written decades later by John Greenleaf Whittier, who is actually a very famous American poet from the area. And we're not done. <laughs> um... So years, decades go by, and, and, and Moulton grows old and eventually passes away. And he's buried, and he has a closed casket, but he has one friend who just wants to get a, get a one last look at Mr. Moulton before he's buried. And, well, the friend picks up the grave, uh, not the grave, the, the casket. He opens it up and looks inside. There's no body there. No, 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 no. 
What's down there? Well, it just happens to be a bunch of gold coins that has the devil's face stamped on them. One last trick from the devil for good old Jonathan Moulton. Now, this is all very curious. Did any of it happen from my perspective? Probably not. But for 200 plus years, these are the stories that have been passed down from Jonathan Moulton. Nothing about his heroics in any of the three wars he fought in. Not about bringing a brigadier general in the uh, New Jersey militia during the Revolutionary War. No, he is remembered as this strange founder. And the last final strangeness of his life is he was actually buried in an unmarked grave, which he asked to be buried in because he was afraid his tombstone would be destroyed by those same neighbors who he thought burned down his house so many decades ago. So that is the life of Jonathan Moulton, kind of the life of Jonathan Moulton, the, the, the mystery and legend of Jonathan Moulton. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, hit like and subscribe uh, for new videos all week long. I put out videos about the American Revolution seven days a week. So thank you for watching, and I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.